Hey foodies, thanks for watching. I want to show you how to make a wild leek and feta tortellini. And I'm out of my garden here, and you can see here, these are some wild leeks. And I'm really excited because it's springtime and fresh greens always come up first. And I love just getting in there and enjoying the food. And wild leeks, you want to pick one of the two leaves of each of them. And that's so that the bulbs have the ability to grow and develop into more bulbs for next year. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the rest of these leaves and I'm gonna grab some green onions and I'll meet you inside in a minute. So we're in the kitchen and I've got Jamie here to help me with making the tortellini and thank you for joining me making tortellini, Jamie. My pleasure as always. It's really exciting. I love making pasta mm -hmm. as I'm you do I love well. eating pasta. Yes. So we want to start by taking our leeks and I've rinsed them off because you always want to rinse things off before you bring them in. Especially when they come out of the garden. That's right. Mm -hmm. So how many leeks do you think we should use for the the sauce? I'd use them all. Yeah okay so let's put them into a jar. Okay. And we're going to I'm just gonna break them up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just that they grind up a little bit better. Your fingers are going to smell good. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Very strong flavor. And maybe a spoon, if you could pass me a spoon. Sure. Okay, and we're going to put a bit of garlic in. Mm -hmm. And I'm using garlic scape pesto right now. If you want to use a regular garlic, you can use like a clove and that should be mm -hmm. the equivalent. And would you crush it first or just throw um, it in there? I would probably crush it just <laughs> to let it get in there, but really it's all going to get pulverized. Okay. And then we're going to put some feta in. And mm -hmm. I'm going to say, let's put almost all of it in. Good. <laughs> and that'll just be the garnish. Okay, so we're going to screw a lid on that. Okay. And then we're going to blend that up and blitz it so that it's nice and smooth. And that's going to be our filling for the tortellini. Jamie's just putting it in the blender. Mm -hmm. And it's going to work. Okay. So let's add a little bit of oil to that, and then we're gonna blitz it up a little bit more. So do you wanna grab the olive oil? Sure. And we'll pour in, oh yeah, look at all that. It's, it's nicely blended there. Okay, so we're gonna add a bit of olive oil. All right, you say one? Yeah, a couple tablespoons. Oh, okay. There we go, perfect. And we're gonna screw the lid on it again, and we're gonna put that in the machine again and just right. let it blitz up. I think that's probably pretty good. And if you don't have a blitzer machine, <laughs> then how would you do this? So we would mince it up with a knife mm -hmm. and just finely, finely chop it. You want it to be nice and fine mm -hmm. um, so that it, it just becomes almost a paste. Could you use a mortar and pestle like we have you over there? You could definitely use a mortar and pestle. So like you're making a pesto. Yes, okay. absolutely. Because that looks like a really gooey pesto. Yes, it, it is a really gooey pesto. And, and you can see just on the inside here, I mean, we've got a couple chunks of feta still, and that, that's perfectly fine. And I'm just going to break it up. And you can see it's, it's, it looks great. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. It smells really good. You want to smell it? Mm-hmm. It smells nice. It smells, yeah. Yeah, it smells nice. Yeah. Um, you I'm can smell the garlicky flavor from the, yeah. um, the wild leek. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm wondering if we should put a little bit of pepper in it just to help accentuate the, uh, the help balance out the feta and the salt. So why don't we put a, a twist of the pepper from the pepper mill? Sure. There you go and do You're that. You're the fancy chef, you would know. There we go. That looks great. Thank you. Okay, and we'll just stir that up. So I'm going to set that aside. And here, I'll give that to you. All right. And that can go in the sink. And we're gonna make the sauce next um, because it's, it all goes quite quickly. So we're gonna make the sauce mm -hmm. and I'm gonna preheat my pan so it's nice and warm. All right. I'm also gonna get my water boiling and we need to put some salt in the water mm -hmm. and that's gonna help it boil a little bit quicker mm -hmm. and make it taste a bit more of a sea, oh. which is what you want. All right. Perfect. So I'm just going to put the lid on that and 
I bet you can tell me why we put a lid on a pot when we want it to boil. Because it boils faster and you use less energy. There we go. How wonderful is that? So we're going to let that boil. We're getting that heating up. So we're going to put the butter in. And then I'm just going to shift that and we're going to chop up our green onions. And I'm just sort of coarsely chopping the green onions. I love how you have a cutting board right there and you chop them up on the counter like a madman. Yeah, I know. I know. That's me. Okay. So that's going to go in. And I'm going to have you stir sure. the things in the, in the, on the stove. So we've got that. And I'm going to grab my garlic. And that's going to go in. Oops, it dropped a bit. There we go. Oh, and I forgot a little bit of green onion there. There we go. And then we have some sun-dried tomatoes. And I don't think I want to use them all, but you want a really sharp knife for, for cutting sun-dried tomatoes. These tomatoes came from our garden. Mm -hmm. And what, what varieties are they? Uh, Costoletto Fiorentino, Big Rainbow, and there's an ox heart as well. Yeah, and there was that little tiny one. Um, oh, the yellow pear. Yeah. Yeah, the yellow pear is really sweet. One of my favorites. Yeah. And they all dry up really well. Yeah, they yeah. do, don't they? Oh, you know what? I might as well just use it all. Use it all. Go big. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm just cutting them into strips. And I think that oil could probably go into the pan. Mm -hmm. Do you want to turn the stove down to medium? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use about half of a red pepper. And I'm going to do thin strips. And I don't think that's going to need a lot of salt. What do you think? Um. Because we've got the feta going in, I think it should be okay. Maybe, oh, uh, lightly. And we've got some parmigiano reggiano going in mm -hmm. at some point. So maybe just a little bit of salt. Oh, there's feta going right into the pan? Yeah. Nah, that's nah, probably okay. fine. Yeah. So what I really like about cooking versus baking is it's, it's more of an art form. You can pick and choose the things that you put in and be mm -hmm. really creative. That's, that's what I really like about cooking versus baking. And baking I love because there's so many varieties of like cake and pie that you can do. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that right down to low. And I'm gonna take the cream, which is right here. Oops. And I'm gonna pour my cream, and this is a heavy cream. And I'm gonna just bring that to a bit of a boil. And what I'm looking for in this, when it comes to a boil, is I'm looking for a little bit of caramelization. So I'm going to turn it back up to medium. Uh -huh. And once it starts to caramelize, and you're going to see it brown in just a moment. And it's going to be amazing. It's looking a little brown around the edges there. Yeah, it's almost there. Oh, okay. It's just starting right here, which yeah. is really nice. And it's, it's smelling really good, so you want it to to almost reduce down. Okay. And do you want to get the grater out for the Parmesan cheese? Sure. And if you want to grate some of that, and while you're doing that, I'm going to put the sundried tomatoes in. Great. It's great. <laughs> so you can see it's actually changed color. Yeah. And that's what we're, we're looking for. A little bit longer, and then I'm going to add a little bit of um, tomato sauce. Okay. And we had a leftover tomato sauce from the other night. Yes. So I'm just going to put a dollop of it, and that's going to change it from a cream sauce to a rose sauce. And I think the rose sauce is going to go really nice with that tortellini. And this tomato sauce is just tomatoes and some herbs. Mm -hmm. I know I made it. Yeah. It's, but I find it's not overly complicated to make a tomato sauce. Yeah. There we go. You can see it's caramelizing right on the sides. So I'm going to add one, 
We'll start with two and I'll give it a stir. I think you could use an extra scoop. There we go. And I'm going to turn that right down to low. Oh, that looks amazing. Okay. So I'm going to turn that off and we're just going to let that sit there and we're going to leave the feta and the red peppers, but I'm going to put the Parmesan cheese in there. We're going to stir that in and that's just to help thicken it and make it even creamier. And we're going to set this aside and we're going to get ahead, go ahead and make the pasta. So we're all ready to make the pasta and I'm going to roll it out with a pasta machine. If you don't have a pasta machine, you can always roll it out with a pasta, like a, a, a rolling pin. Mm -hmm. um, but I just find I like the consistency, the, the, the consistent thickness that it's always going to be um, when rolling it out with a pasta machine, especially when you're making tortellini or ravioli, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, we want to start by putting our psyllium into our mixing bowl. Okay. Um, we're using a, a KitchenAid mixer. But if you don't have a KitchenAid mixer, you can use just a bowl with an electric mixer or just a bowl with a spoon, mm -hmm. and that's fine too. And we're gonna drop our, flour, our, our water in. And what this is doing is it's creating a bit of a gel. Mm -hmm. And we're just gonna wait for it to gel up, which takes about 30 seconds to 45 seconds. Okay. It's been about a minute mm -hmm. and we're going to add our egg. So do you want to crack the egg? Sure. And let's crack it into a bowl. And the reason why we're cracking it in a bowl is just to make sure that there aren't any shells. The egg isn't turned. So you go ahead and... You don't trust me to crack it right in there? I, I don't trust myself to crack it right into the bowl. I've put so many shells into baking products. And I'm like, mm -hmm. mm, I, I, don't want, I don't want to bite down on a shell. So let's put that right in. All right. And let's put our flour in. I'm using Frankie's gluten-free all-purpose flour today. Mm -hmm. It works cup for cup with everything that I throw at it. And the only thing that we don't have on the counter right now is salt. And we need to add a, 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 right. a good pinch of salt. Beautiful. So let's mix that up. And that looks really nice. It's come together really nicely. What do you think of it? I think it looks fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It looks like dough. It does look like dough. Do you need this anymore? No, we're done with that. So I'm adding a little bit of flour and we're just gonna massage the flour right into the dough. And you can really feel, because we added the psyllium mm -hmm. fiber, it's really made it a lot more elastic. Mm -hmm. and you, like you can see it's springing back, which is really exciting to see when it comes to uh, pasta dough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like it has gluten in it, but it doesn't have gluten no, in it. No, it doesn't have gluten in it. Because usually gluten-free dough is really... Yeah, crumbly. Yeah. yeah. Or gooey. Yeah. Do you want to grab a knife and we'll cut that right in half? Sure. I'm thinking of a oh. nice sharp knife. Yeah, do you want to cut it? Sure, in half. Okay. Yeah, right in half. That's great. And it's going to be a little sticky still, and that's okay. So, we want to start by putting this through the pasta machine okay. at its widest setting. That might be at its highest or its lowest. And I'll turn it, and you put it in, and... Oh, look at that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut that in half. Okay. So we've got a lot of pasta dough here. And let's fold them into three. Okay. And we make sure we get a little tiny bit of flour on there. And then we're gonna roll it through. And that looks really nice. And then this time I'm just gonna fold it in half because okay. it's about the width of that. And when we're putting it in, we want to rotate it by 90 degrees. By 90 degrees? Yes. Okay. And then we need a little bit more flour. There we go. Looks great. 
Okay, and we put it in again. And rotating it 90 degrees. Yeah. Okay. And I think one more pass and it'll probably be good. There we go. We put that in. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful looking pasta dough. Mm -hmm. So to set that there and we'll do the rest. Okay. And in half this time? Yeah. Okay. There we go. Nice. It doesn't need much flour. No. Half again? Yeah. Half one more time? One more time. Oh, that looks great. Okay, so now we're going to roll it one step thinner. So let's go back to the first one. All right. And it's going to get thinner. I'm going to keep my hand under to catch it. And you can take it now. Okay, and we'll do the next one. This is going to be forever. <laughs> <laughs> Go and let's <clears throat> go one more thickness thinner. Okay, so it's back to the beginning. One it's more like, thickness thinner. One more thickness thinner. Yeah, it's like jumbo shrimp. It's an oxymoron. <laughs> like it's. There we go. And that looks like a nice consistency and thickness for for making tortellini. It sure does. Beautiful. So I'm going to just remove this pasta machine. So I've got two circle cutters, mm -hmm. and I think the smaller one's going to work the best. Okay. But we'll have to, it's going to be trial and error to see. Okay. So we, I'll start with just one. We're cutting it out. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to grab a little spoon of that. Of this stuff? Yeah. We're going to okay. put a little dollop right in the middle. I'll just use my finger. There we go. Just like that. Yeah. And then I'm going to fold it over. And I'm pressing the edges all together. Okay. And then I'm bending it up and tying it together, like pressing it at the bottom. Oh, neat. So it looks like a little hat. It looks like a little hat. And that is tortellini. And I can't get over how stretchy this paint this. It sure is. Is. Yeah. So I've got a pan back here, which we're going to put the finished tortellini on. I'll put that right beside you. Alrighty. And I think that's a nice size. What do you think? Sure. Should they be a little larger? Or? I, I think they're probably that's, pretty good. That's fine. And this is, what would you say that is? Four centimeters? Sure. Roughly? Yeah. So I'm just going to cut those out. And then if you want to put the dollop in the middle. All right. And we'll get a little uh, system going. Boop. That might be too much. When I fold it over? Yeah, you're folding it over. Yeah. Yeah, that was too much. And then I am wrapping them around like a little hat. Yeah. This one's a little on the fat side. That's okay. Oops. Here, I'll get another spoon. Oh, there's one right there. There's one right there. So, fold it in half, and I'm pressing in all the edges just to keep it from collapsing, and then I'm just uh, folding it. So that's the wrong sequence. That's it's, the wrong way around? Yeah, it's the wrong way around. You want to have the pasta on the outside. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. That's beautiful. I'm just going to go along and just put a dollop on each. And we can just hammer through some of these. I find this is this would be a lot of fun with kids. I was going to say, you could have a little tortellini making party. Yeah. yeah. 
Oops. There we go. And I'll get this one going. Look at the stretch on that pasta dough. It's fantastic. Oh my goodness. And I find the first few are always really hard. Because mm -hmm. you're like, oh yeah, how do I do this? And you slowly walk your way through it. And the first couple look really kind of bad. And then... I'm not saying yours look bad, I'm just saying the first few in general, like when you're making crepes, for instance, the first crepe never works out. Okay. <laughs> but then by the time you're on to the fourth or fifth one, you're like, wow, I've uh, really gotten really good at this. Okay, so that's those. So we're going to go ahead and finish the rest of these and we'll get on to the next step. See you in a moment. So these turned out really well. They look great. We had a little bit of pasta dough left over, yeah. but you know what? This is all I think we're gonna need for for lunch. Yeah, and I guess if you want to use all of the pasta dough in one go, you just make twice as much filling. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we're gonna put this into our pot of boiling water, mm -hmm. and let's just drop them in. They don't take long at all because it's fresh pasta. See them all just sort of hanging out down at the bottom. There we go. Oh, one just floated. Oh, two, three. They're floating. Means they're getting close to done. You got some floaters? Yeah. So while that's there, I'm going to put this on uh -huh. again. And I'm going to put my red peppers in. Uh -huh. And I like putting my red peppers in near the end. It leaves a bit of crunch. Yeah. And it maintains the sweetness of them, and then they don't get these gummy, chewy things. Yeah. There are places where a soggy red pepper is good, and there are places where a soggy red pepper doesn't belong. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay, so I want to keep this sauce just on a medium-low, or even a low. And you can see our, our tortellini are turning out really nicely. Mm-hmm. So that's long enough to cook the onions and yeah, like a, inside? Yeah, like a minute and a half, like that's that's all you really need. Like you mm -hmm. want it to I guess boil. there's not a lot in each, so... No, there isn't a lot in each. And I mean, you're putting it in boiling water. Right. And they look really nice. They sure do. So I'm gonna, if you can pass me the sieve, there we go. And I'm going to put them right into the pan with the sauce and the peppers. Mm. Oh, that smells so good. It sure does. It smells so <laughs> good. Okay, I'm gonna turn the this down, the pasta mm -hmm. sauce right down below. I'm just waiting for it to start to foam a little tiny bit. Yeah. And that's going to tell me that it's really cooked. Okay. But I mean, the, the noodles themselves are cooked already because there's not, again, like you said, there's not a lot to them. And you can see it's getting bigger and bigger, and that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so I'm going to turn that off. We're going to scoop these out. And I'm fine going quickly and getting a little bit of water in there because I want a little bit of water. That starchy water? That starchy water. So I'm going to pour just a, just a tiny little amount. Okay. And I'm going to turn it up. Look at how much creamier that little bit of starchy water made it. Mm. And the reason why you want to cook the cream right down is because it's going to get sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. So we're going to actually have a rather sweet rose sauce here. And then you add the, the starchy water mm -hmm. to thicken it further, but also just make it that much creamier. Look at that. That looks so, so nice. It sure does. Okay, so let's set that there. I'm going to put this over here. Oh, let's plate it. <laughs> I want to eat it right away. <laughs> so do you want to grab a plate and we'll... Uh... There we 
go. So let's. Lisa. <laughs> That looks really good. That looks nice. really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to do something like that. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, let's, let's go big or go home, like you said. And then I'm going to take some of the feta. Mm-hmm. And we're going to crumble it right up on top. There. And we'll do the next plate, and we'll just right. see what it looks like. And we'll put it all together. And I think there's going to be some leftovers. Nope. No. <laughs> what I love is the sundried tomatoes and mm -hmm. the leeks came from our garden mm -hmm. and we made it all from scratch right right in front of you and yeah. so did the garlic. And the garlic? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, no. That looks really good. Mm-hmm. Let me know what you think. I will. Oh, it smells so good. I'm going to eat out of the pan so we can leave this one for the gram. Oh, then we'll share. <laughs> sure. Yeah, you try. Try this one. Mm. Is it hot? It's perfect. Oh, it's really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's creamy and then the little mm -hmm. pop of the, the leek comes mm -hmm. through and it's almost like the leek comes through right after the feta mm -hmm. and you're like oh that's that's really nice mm -hmm. that's really good and it's not overpowering no nope. because i was like oh this is a lot of leek leaves like wild leek leaves and like it is. is it is it going to be too much but it's it's not too much well i think it gets thinned out with all of everything else mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i want one more i want to eat the whole plate <laughs> mm. yeah that's really nice that's really good. It is really good. I can't wait to finish this. If you're looking for the full recipe and details, you can visit glutenfreeguy.ca. You can also follow me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Instagram, and also on Rogers TV. And next week, it's going to be scones, English traditional scones, or scones. See you soon. So I was talking to Betty down at the laundromat. She said that Nancy said that she saw Barbara. <laughs>